Hey everyone, this is uh, Tyler, and I'm going to be checking out the automation game from Steam where you can design and create custom vehicles and engines. Um, as someone who's pretty interested in the automotive space, I've always been into cars, I thought it'd be fun to check out. I've had this game for, I think, two years now, I just have another time to get really into it, so I figured now's the time to give it a chance. We'll start with a new engine design. Um, here we go. New engine variant. I think I gotta make a new family first. Um, what do we want to do here? My knowledge of engines is rather limited, but I'm eager to learn more. Let's do an inline six for fun, you know like those Toyota Supras and BMWs nowadays. Even Mercedes, I think, are making them still in their like base S-classes and things. Um, this is just free mode, so I have unlimited money and resources. There is a campaign where you have to abide by some constraints. For fun, just to investigate here, uh, let's go with an aluminum block. Um, I don't know if that's, I feel like that's probably standard nowadays. Aluminum, silicon, and magnesium are probably, oh, okay. Wait. Yeah, there's some statistics here. I don't know if cast iron is common still in blocks. Um, like I said, I'm not that familiar with engines. Not as familiar as I'd like to be. Okay, displacement. What's a, what's a good displacement here for an engine? Let's go with... It's around three liters right now. Um, bore and stroke are similar. Um, I'm going to go with a shorter stroke just so we can get a little bit of a higher red line, higher RPM. Um, and I'll bring the bore back up until we hit near three liters. Yeah, there we go. Just under three liters. Okay. Um, head and valves, push rod, what do I know about push rods? I think they're common in some old LS GM engines. Um, they, they're, yeah, okay, lower R maximum RPM with them. I think it's a pretty dated technology, um, but they're cheap. Direct acting overhead cam. I'm not familiar with direct acting, what that means. What does it look like when we see that? Um, okay, it looks like it's two valves per cylinder. Is that what it is? Yeah. Versus overhead cam. Oh, okay, I can choose. Um, yeah, and dual overhead cam. Okay, dual camshafts. I see. Jeez, five valves per cylinder. What engines have that? Let's just go with single overhead cam. Um, four valves per cylinder seems pretty cool. Let's check that out. The head material, I will also stick with aluminum. Variable valve lift, I believe this stands for. Um, okay, so it just increases costs and production time, but I think it allows for some interesting performance gains to be made at, at different engine RPMs and profiles. Um, let's do it. Okay. The crank. Um, what is standard? I'm uncertain. There's no flat plane crank option for those of you who have been seeing the new Corvette Z06 news or like many Ferraris or Italian exotics or even um, the Shelby GT350. It gives a high RPM red line and, and unique sound. Um, I'm going to go with forged steel. Uh, this is probably going to be an expensive <laughs> engine. Um, connecting rods. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to max torque, max RPM. Lightweight titanium. Okay, that would be expensive. I want this engine to rev out. I think that'd be cool. Let's do lightweight forged. 
um, cast, heavy duty cast, forged. Forged meaning, I need to look more into what what is forged metal, metal mean exactly. Cast, I'm familiar with. You pour molten metal into a mold um, and you get a cast part. Uh, there's some drawbacks to this structurally um, from what I re recall from my engineering degree in college. Uh, some labs where we poured some cast aluminum and looked at defects. Um, I don't know what's standard in industry, especially for like cheap, cheaper sports cars. Say we were creating something like a $50,000 Toyota Super here. What is, what is standard? Probably forged. Um, this offers a high RPM and, and high torque. Let's do with that. Let's go with that. Um, the quality slider, I think here, just adjust maybe, I don't know, quote unquote tolerances or, or uh, yeah, the quality of the part. I, I'm not going to mess with it to make it worse or better. Um, I'd like to see the performance we can achieve here just with standard quality. Um, variant capacity. Larger variant capacity, more power, better prestige. What is prestige? Okay, there's some stuff to investigate here. Smaller variant capacity, somewhat lighter weight, better fuel economy, better smoothness. Um, I'll leave that for now until I'm more familiar with it. Okay, here's the stuff that I need to learn more about. <laughs> Compression ratio. This is the <coughs> ratio between the volume in the chamber, I believe, from top dead center to bottom dead center. 9.6 to 1, that's the normal range. Much lower octane, yes, so higher compression means you need higher octane because you need that resistance to the fuel self-igniting, the knock um, pre-ignition. Pre um, higher compression gives you more power though and better efficiency because um, your PV work, I'm trying to think, your, your, your work that's being done, your pressure volume work being done, mechanical work, um, is greater at higher compression ratios. You're doing more force over more distance. Um, let's go with a little bit higher, 10.6 to 1. Cam profile, what is a cam profile? Okay, these questions will answer. Yes, the camshaft controls opening and closing of intake and exhaust valves. Um, yes, a mild cam profile opens the valves a small amount for a short time. Smooth idle, low emissions, good power, low RPM. More aggressive cam profiles will also hold the valves. Okay, you need to avoid maybe valve float though. Yeah, they work well at high RPMs. This is where it's useful to have variable cam profiles. That's what I think VTEC is, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Um, hmm. Okay, let's go with this is gonna be a sports car engine. Let's go with fifty eight. <laughs> variable valve lift profile. Um Yes, two different cam profiles, yes. One for low RPM, one for high RPM. The switchover point selected automatically and optimally on the selected profiles. Interesting. How is it done optimally? That's an interesting question. Um, I will... Hmm... Reduced valve float. Yeah, that's what I was worried about at least higher RPM. So let's we'll increase this to 70. VVT. So what is, variable valve lift and variable valve timing. Huh. Variable valves are a collection of technologies to help optimize the valve train action throughout the engine operating conditions. Yeah, this is interesting. I know that Koenigsegg has done some work. Um, I think they have a an, a company called Free Valve where it's all done electro-pneumatically. Um, so there's no shafts or anything. It's all computerized, which allows some for some interesting things to be done to fine-tune the um, 
the valve timing for each individual cylinder, you can effectively shut down um, an engine into any number of cylinder configurations. All right, we'll leave the quality. Um, the name of the game <laughs> over the past 10 years has been turbocharge everything. Yeah, let's throw a turbo on here. Uh, there's our inner cooler, I think. Single turbo, joint bearing, journal bearing, and ball bearing. A ball bearing, I, I imagine. Inner cooler. Oh, geez, I didn't change my units to horsepower yet. Um, 272 kilowatts. What is that? About 400 horsepower, I think. I know there's 746 watts is one horsepower, so. Um, yeah, an intercooler cools the air after being compressed by the turbocharger from the turbine, or the compressor side of the turbocharger. Um, geez, uh, let me just do some quick math here. 332 kilowatts divided by 746, that is 445 horsepower. That seems ample, maybe a little bit more. Fuel presets, we'll go for performance here. Yeah, larger compressor. Okay, yes, you're getting more dense air intake. Um, more pressure into your combustion chamber at higher RPMs, potentially more power. Um, but it probably spools up, yep. So the smaller compressor, you get better throttle response at low RPM, um, less turbo lag, uh, which is, I think, quite important. That's what the point of uh, dual turbochargers are for, um, twin turbo setups, I think you can have, or I think it's common to have a small turbo and a larger turbo. That's what I think the Bugatti Veyron does, but with four. Um, we'll leave it here for now. They're pretty close in size. I don't know if that's common. Um, air fuel ratio, no, AR ratio is the measure of how constricting the lead up to the turbine is as compared to the turbine's wheel radius. Oh, okay. I'm unfamiliar with this term. A lower AR ratio giving a narrow, faster airflow helps spool the turbo. So faster airflow, higher velocity. That means lower pressure, though, I believe. Um, this works up to a point where narrow becomes too narrow in this lower section. Okay, higher is later spool up. I'll leave this in the middle for now, too. Um, for those of you unfamiliar with this game, it'll show me some performance metrics once I complete this engine build and I can go back and edit things and we can fine tune it. Maximum boost, one less than a bar. No, let's go to uh, two bar at least. Ah, uh, 1.6 bar. I think a bar is an atmosphere. Yeah, a bar is just an atmosphere around 14.7 PSI. Um, so this would be around 20 something pounds of boost. Let's do that. Um, injected mechanical fuel injection. Direct injection is common. Multi-point electronic fuel injection. Mm. Does this mean it's port injection and direct injection? I don't know what multi-point um, means. Direct injection, direct, directly injecting the fuel into the cylinder, I know you can f more finely control your air-fuel ratio and I think create more power. Um, but you also are unable to spray fuel, air-fuel mixture over the valves which, which keeps them clean. So you can get uh, carbon buildup on your valves and direct injection engines. I know that's something I'm going to have to look out for on my car. I have a little turbo four cylinder direct injection. Um, let's go with it for the power though. Um, per cylinder. Intake. What does this look like? A standard intake. Air intake manifold. Performance. Okay. 
race. Oh boy. We'll go with the performance air intake. Fuel type. We will run Ron uh, We'll run premium. Ooh, there's all of our stuff. Okay. Exhaust headers. This would be the air intake here. This is our air box. Okay. What is this changing? Air intake compressed through the turbine, cooled through the intercooler here, then goes, or this is our air box. Air box comes in, air is compressed, it increases in pressure and temperature, runs through the intercooler, cools down, lower pressure, uh, or lower temperature, then goes into the intake manifold and into the cylinders, um, where you have combustion, and then our exhaust gases come out of this exhaust header manifold spin this compressor side of the turbocharger setup, which um, that shaft power work is used to spin the turbine side. I mean, sorry, this is the turbine side, and that shaft power is spent to, sent to the compressor to compress the incoming inlet air, and then the exhaust gases are sent out the back. Um, fuel mixture, 14.2. That is stoichiometric, I believe. Um, 14.7 I thought was stoichiometric. Mm. Yes, 14.7 is stoichiometric. Um, Rich runs cooler, but you can, yeah, there's a whole bunch of info here. Less likely to knock. Okay. We'll run slightly rich. Ignition timing, oh boy, this looks complicated. When the spark plug fires relative to the position of, of the piston, um, the spark must be fired before the piston reaches the top of the cylinder, thus causing the highest combustion pressure to occur. Yeah. The faster the engine spins, the earlier the spark needs to be, so you need to... advanced the earlier, yeah, the earlier the spark happens, the more advanced the ignition timing. Okay, so at higher RPMs, we need a more advanced timing setup. I'll increase this a little bit. Uh, we went with those high RPM parts um, that have, what is it that they have? That, uh, lower inertia, um, so they can change direction faster, prompting higher RPMs, is that what it is? Um, also just with stronger forged internals, um, the stresses. Let's go with 8600. Wow, that's high, but we'll see what happens. We'll see how the we'll see the dyno plot <laughs> how the power fall off. Headers, short cast, single. Yes, yeah, single exhaust. We've got a single turbocharger. Bypass valves. That is used for recirculation, I think, um, for the turbo two. Ooh, what is a bypass valve? Has something to do, it's kind of like a blow off valve, but it, it doesn't dump to atmosphere, I think. It's used to maintain, um, prevent really high pressures in the turbocharger. I'll have to look more into this. Uh, here we go. Muffler bypass valves allow for some or mufflers with an exhaust system to be bypassed. Oh. Oh, never mind. I was thinking about something else. This is allows basically for an open exhaust. Yes, it allows them to pass regulations when the bypass valve is closed and then be nice and throaty and get better performance when the valve is open. Exhaust diameter. Three inch exhaust. Ooh, okay. Jesus looks crazy. <laughs> Four and a half. I imagine that's inches. Maximum power. I'll go three point five. Catalytic converter. Uh, the two way. 
first muffler that's like a resonator I think just baffling um, straight through oh my gosh well this engine sucks <laughs> alright so we have knock um, indicates engine knock yeah let's see the engine failure due to knock try lowering the compression and ignition timing the engine suffers from valve fill reducing the reliability okay yeah look at this it's tanking 50 newton meters wow um, I'll leave the RPM timing for now let's go back to the compression ratio and fix this there we go we fixed the knock but that's a very low compression ratio okay just I guess it's normal yeah no knock no knock let's get right up on the cusp of knock I don't know we're not really dealing with safety factors here <laughs> valve float Dang, okay, we have a lot of torque in the power. Um, yeah, all of our power's up here past 4,000 RPM, which is amazing. Um, and the torque doesn't build till 3,000 RPM, but basically it's worthless after 7,300 RPM. Um, you know what I bet will change? these characteristics a lot. Yep. Shifting the plot left to right is the the profile of the compressor. So increased compressor is later spool but more power. Um, more responsive. Yeah, that's too low in power. Huh. Okay. I'd like this to be better looking on the left side here. I'm sure quality would fix a lot of things, but I think that's kind of cheating. Um, ignition timing. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> well, let's kill it at 7,800. That's still pretty high. Um, okay, I guess we can do some decoration now. Valve cover, yeah, red. That's cool. Valve cover trim. Chrome. Bolts, chrome. Mm. No, steel. Intake manifold. Uh, I'll leave it carbon, I think. Is that carbon? Yeah. Okay. 263 kilowatt at 6400 RPM. Here we can test it. Now let's do the automatic. <coughs> Wow, it does not sound very good. Let's manually test it. We are peak torque, about 20 psi, like I expected. Yeah. Five hundred newton meters is a lot.
Okay, well, th that's interesting. Definitely some stuff to check out here, investigate. Um, I think it was good for the first time. Look at these costs. I don't know if that's accurate or anything. <laughs> 1900 bucks, 202 kilograms. I don't, like I said, I'm not familiar with what's, if these are good values or not. Uh, a fuel economy, what is this relative to what? Uh, emissions. Yeah, this game seems very thorough though. Definitely cool to check out. Um, I'll probably do another episode that I can throw up on my YouTube channel. This is uh, just a tester, a teaser, see if it's something that I'm interested in and if any others are interested in following along. Um, Alright, thanks.